so we're doing things a little bit different today than I think uh, have been done in the past. This is kind of a hybrid event, so we're in person here. Uh, just so you know, we're recording this and it will be posted later on this afternoon to social media this afternoon or tomorrow uh, once the PAO team has, a, has an opportunity to, uh, to compile the video. Um, so just realize that you're being recorded and later on this afternoon um, you may find yourself uh, on social media. Um, so I just wanted to do a quick introduction uh, for those of you that don't know me. I know everybody over here knows me and I think these two ladies up here know me. Uh, but I'm Captain Anna Franco. I am the new uh, base CEO here at the, at the base. Uh, super excited to be back in Gulfport. Uh, so I did two previous tours in the area with my family. Uh, so we spent four years cumulative total here in, in Gulfport. At the time I actually lived off base in Long Beach. Um, and this time around, we actually um, are residents of the base as well. So we, we've been living in housing now for about a week and a half, still getting out of boxes. Uh, but I've got uh, married, my husband is a Navy civilian, so he works actually remote. The command he works for is up in DC. And uh, I have two boys, uh, one 15 year old and a 12 year old. So uh, you'll probably see them running around uh, the base when it cools down a little bit, because it is rather hot these days. Uh, but that's just a little bit about me. I um, wanted to take this opportunity to welcome um, NMCB1 is, is coming home. Uh, so we've started to see some of those CVs start to roll back into the base. Uh, for NMCB133, those guys are getting ready um, to head out. Uh, so just wanted to extend um, all the services, make sure that the families know that we are here for them uh, during uh, their um, significant other's deployment. Um, so if anything comes up, whether it's, you know, uh, the Clinton Family S uh, Service Center, religious programs, the FRGs are also available, the ombudsman, uh, ombudsman for the, each of those commands are also a great uh, support, but um, I want to make sure folks know that uh, we'll, we're taking care of those families while their uh, spouses are deployed, spouses or significant others. Um, <clears throat> So uh, just a couple things that I wanted to kind of hit on first and then I'll open it up for questions and then we'll close out with uh, just some upcoming events that I want to make sure that the community knows about. I do have a team of folks here from housing. Uh, our partner in Balfour Beatty is here as well. MWR is here. Uh, and so I, I may ask them to help me out answering some of these questions if I don't know them yet as I'm still kind of getting reacclimated to, um, to this community. But, uh, but please don't hesitate uh, to, to ask whatever's on your mind. Uh, so first off, just wanted to uh, update everybody on the tenant satisfaction survey. So that was completed with, uh, we had about a 28% response rate. So Balfour Beatty is compiling those responses now to come up with a plan of action for projects to address the specific concerns that were raised um, through that tenant satisfaction survey um, and implement any suggestions. Um, also on the HVAC retrofit front, uh, so we still have eight houses that need to be retrofitted with new air conditioning. So we're basically essentially substantially complete, 95% of the homes uh, that, that uh, were part of that uh, in the Magnolia One neighborhood are, are completed and we're anticipating that those remaining eight houses will be done here by, uh, by September. Um, and then uh, lastly, just wanted to really reemphasize, so I spent this morning with, uh, with uh, a, a, the, the core team of the uh, leadership here of the base. So as, as, uh, as many of you have probably seen on the, uh, on, on the news, uh, Idalia um, is the uh, hurricane that is tracking up through the uh, Gulf of Mexico. We're anticipating that that hurricane is going to be impacting uh, that, what we call the Big Bend of Florida, uh, close to the Tampa area, and it's probably gonna go straight across Florida, come out near Jacksonville, Mayport area, and then head into the Atlantic and maybe impact uh, the uh, Georgia, South Carolina coastline <coughs> on the Atlantic side. Uh, but it's a, just a great reminder that we are really now heading into um, the, uh, the hurricane season where we could see impacts here uh, to, to the Gulf Coast. 
so it was a great reminder this morning, just kind of going through the process and the checklist that we have to prepare the base. But I, I would encourage everybody, um, all of our housing residents, to, to, to really make sure that uh, you're preparing yourselves, whether it's you know, thinking about where you would evacuate if, if, if the decision was made by myself uh, to evacuate uh, the base, uh, if, uh, if, if you have uh, any special requirements for like an emergency kit, say medications that you may need, um, or just special equipment, things like that, uh, ensuring you have batteries, all the emergency supplies, getting that now before we get the news that we actually have a storm and then the lines just become um, completely unmanageable. Uh, also, it's important to think about, um, you know, what would you do with pets um, or, or younger family members? Um, again, plans that you may have now while it's, everything's normal and the sun's shining outside may not be what you can rely on. Uh, in, in the event of destructive uh, type of weather. And then things to, that you would need to do to protect your home, uh, like bringing furniture indoors, plants, things like that, uh, that we don't wanna have become um, um, hazards, if you will, um, if, if we have a high wind event. And lastly, um, any insurance that needs that, that you may have as well, just verifying that you're good to go there. Um, Fleet and, Family, uh, Fleet and Family Service Center does have available, if for anybody that's, uh, that's new to this hurricane stuff, they do have the ability to schedule one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions uh, and appointments with families to, to make sure that, uh, that, 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 that folks are prepared, okay? So take advantage of that. They don't, they, they don't have any, any classes scheduled, but walk in, you can schedule an appointment and, and they'll uh, get you going down the right path. Um, all right, with that, what I wanna do is just open it up to questions and see what's on everybody's mind. So just raise your hand. Um, we have a mic up here, so it should capture the question and then we'll, uh, we'll address it. Well, I'll start. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I've only been here two months. Uh, but one of the problems which is becoming is our mailing address. I'm over on and the numbers of three digit numbers were well was no longer recognized by UPS or USPS. They changed the numbers to four digits. So we're now with them. And we're having trouble with the post office is okay. They got a piece of paper that translates for them. But UPS doesn't accept in their computer system any longer and when the UPS truck comes to that neighborhood there's no markings for the four digit numbers so that's something that needs to be addressed at some point. Okay. Uh, I mentioned the Balfour housing about this when we first moved in and they didn't know anything about it but when I went to USPS they said oh well, Balfour housing was the one that told us about it. Okay. So there seems to be a lack of communication or something. Do, and, and from what you can tell, it's it's your neighbors are also having yeah, the same it's, situation. Yeah, it's that couple streets down there, which are the three-digit numbers, not the four. It's going to be a progressive because, like I said, uh, UPS no longer enters the three digits in their computer system. The USPS still does, but very shortly they're not going to take it anymore. So if you address something or three digits, you may not get your name. Okay. Uh, Go ahead, Tom. Uh, this, this man, this came out with the 911 um, compliance. NAPAC sent out this list of addresses across the entire base that was supposed to change. Uh, they came back and realized that change in street addresses, it was all of Pinewood um, and two streets over MAG-1 that were supposed to change addresses. MAG-1's all four digits. Can't figure that out. I have reached back to NAPAC, to the original personnel that started all the emails, and they said nothing's changing with the addresses. So, knowing that it was UPS, I could reach back to them now and provide them that information. Um, we have tracked it, we are aware of it. It's somewhere in the system, nobody's talking up higher now. Okay, so um, is there another address that folks could? I, to have packages delivered in the meantime, or is, is it just we need to communicate? And 
I need to reach back. So you said FedEx, UPS. I don't. I didn't go with FedEx. We use just UPS. Just UPS and USPS. Yes, yes. I mean, I would I would suspect that FedEx might be a problem as well. FedEx would probably be the same as UPS, I would think. Okay. And that's what they mentioned too. This was something to do with 911. It is. So you know, for a long time, our bases just had building numbers. Um, and we rely a lot on, so if, if you call 911, right, so we all have these fancy digital things in our pockets. I left mine over there. The problem is that when you dial 911 from those digital devices, it goes to the local tower and it directs it out to a, um, to a dispatch, the local dispatch center. And so the only way that, that, uh, that they can, know exactly where you're at is we have to have physical addresses. But for a long time, military bases, all we had was, hey, the chapel was building number, pick your, you know, even, even streets were a little bit confusing. So this is all tied to just being able to provide emergency response, but understand that obviously you want to get your mail. Uh, so we'll, 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 we'll reach out to, to those commercial providers to see what we can do um, Thank you. to fix that. All right, what else? Yes, Ron. Um, I put in a request uh, several months ago about fixing the playground by the Navy Lodge. I guess I was just wondering what the completion date would be. Okay, so we're working on that. Uh, so that playground doesn't belong to housing. It doesn't belong to MWR. It's, it's an old housing area that we had many, many years ago. And uh, so the good news is we've identified equipment that we can put in place, uh, excess equipment from another installation. But we're, we're having challenges finding the, the dollars that it takes to actually do the replacement. So I don't have a good timeline yet on, hey, it's going to get fixed on this day. Um, as the new fiscal year rolls out, we'll, we'll see if we can identify the, the, the dollars, if you will, so we can, so we can make the replacement. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, unfortunately, it's not, a, so it's not a housing playground. It's not, it's, it's not an MWR playground. It's just a playground. So. We'll, we'll, we'll work, you know, like good old uh, military. Uh, it's one of those scenes and gaps that uh, we'll have to address as a base. Um, and, and potentially, um, you know, I stayed at the Navy Lodge. I never saw any kids playing over there, but I don't know if they're not playing there because the equipment isn't, isn't disrepaired. Um, uh, why not some families were playing there and wanting it to be fixed up? And I don't think they are now because of the, the shambles. Of, but you know, now we have families that will be going back into the lodge and preparing and wanting that to be available. So. Gotcha. But yeah, that's so we, the good news is we have identified equipment um, to replace it. Now we just have to get the dollars to be able to, to, to execute the, the replacement work. Okay? So we'll, we'll keep working that. And hopefully Great. we'll have a, a better you. timeline here soon that we can publish. Debbie, did you have anything else? I know it's not your equipment, but. No, um, we have, I, mean, I can send a certified playground inspector over there to look at it. And so, but it might wind up getting shut down with that, as long as you're prepared for that. So, you might just have to close it all the way down if it's not safe to do If it's that bad. Right. Until so the new equipment. it was just four swings that needed to be replaced. And they took down the swings because they were just all janky. Well, I was over, I was over there um, taking pictures of it because I am part of working on this process to get this playground equipment from a base in New Orleans that isn't using it. It's only two years old, and it's never been actually utilized because the center was at closed down during COVID. And so um, the pour and play, the fall protection service, it all needs to be replaced. There's tree roots growing up through it, so there are several issues over there that are safety concerns. So um, it's not. I wish it was just as easy as unbolting yeah. the piece of equipment that's there and bolting down a new one, but to do it right, there's probably going to have to be some structural work done on that surface. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, the nature trail. I was wondering who maintains that because um, it just needs some trimming and some like cleaning up, and my kids are on it. All, well, my son's on it all the time, so I was just curious. <laughs> So I know we had, I know he and I had a conversation about this trail when I moved into the house. This is, another, this is another one of those mysterious facilities on base that nobody owns. Um, 
Public Works does go out and they do minor maintenance to some of the boards and slats when they get broken, um, flip the picnic table over during a hurricane. Um, me and Ken have gone out and blown the leaves off of it, um, and it is not 100% not a MWR function. Is it something that maybe the home court um, battalion can look into and see if they could like, do a volunteer after you? I think you might know a guy I, I that might. has a so crew. Project. That's, that's what I was asking. Absolutely. That's kind of what we were discussing at home. <laughs> okay. But yes, yeah, it's, it's one of those, it's, it's a funding thing that nobody has funding to support. Okay. Thanks, Tom. That's it. Okay. What else? Yes, ma'am. Um, I would like an explanation um, of why the rent on base is going up $125 a month. I find that extremely excessive. Okay, so I. I'm assuming that you're a civilian or an associate yes, affiliated. Yeah. Not so not not active duty, Correct. not okay. So I'm go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I can take that one. Yeah. Hey Mr. Mr. Bruce, sorry. Um, so yeah, we are the market rates get evaluated and this is not something that's done specifically here by the Gulf Force site team. It's they take into consideration everything in the surrounding area. So this is done up above, you know my my level on what those rates will be um they were recently evaluated which merits the increase the neighborhood that y'all are in has not increased in many years and has merited that increase unfortunately based off of what the bah amounts are for the active duty what the rents are out in the community with you know what's kind of provided what's comparable out there um, and unfortunately those are the rates that have been I wish I could tell you yes, ma'am, for that, but certainly if you, after this, I can get with you or you want to come in and see me, I mean, we can route those concerns up, you know, specifically to the, the proper entities to get you some better information and detail and, you know, kind of work through you with it that way, but unfortunately I don't have the ability to change, decree, set it well above me, unfortunately. <coughs> Yeah. I also wanted to thank you for this conference. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. <laughs> so yeah, we can, I, I didn't want to take up too much time, either, sure. unless it's a concern of other people, which it, mm. I'm sure it is. Um, definitely, you know, I, I, we, I certainly understand, because um, you did get kind of quite a bit of a jump there from what you were accustomed yeah. to to now. Um, so, but unfortunately, yes, those were the rates that were approved and handed down for anyone that's going through the renewal process and any new, any new coming in. Because um, I'm assuming you're up for renewal it's probably next month. Yeah, we got the letter on there for yeah. like last week, you know, for like this case. It's tough. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I completely understand. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to talk more about it, I'm happy to get with you and we'll, we'll discuss it further for sure. But hopefully that kind of answered <coughs> the question. I don't want it to say I don't know. something like that, but then I thought, It's based off of a lot of things yeah, that we are looking at very heavily and regularly, you know, in the economy, um, comparable items here, you know, it's, it's a lot that goes into it. So it is definitely very heavy, heavily evaluated between about the and maybe region with what those rates Yeah, are so I, I mean, we're also, we've also got the responsibility of the, the basic allowance for housing for our military members um, and doing those surveys uh, on a regular basis so that we ensure that our service members that live out in town, are, are their, their allowance is comparable to the rents that they're seeing out in town. So unfortunately, it's, it's, right, it's, it's all interrelated. They don't live on base, uh, but the fact that those rates are going up means that the economy on the outside is driving those prices up. And for, for us active duty family members that live on here, we don't really see that change. Uh, the, the, the rate goes up, but understand that for, for our civilians that, that live on base, you potentially are, are, are seeing that um, when you're up for renewal. We're just going to start charging on Sunday. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> just one more question on that. Why, why does the, does the price difference between signing the lease and going month to month have to be such a big disparity? Correct. So we're not really, it's not that we're not designed for a month to month function that can be in place, but with this new universal lease, it's very difficult for a month to month scenario. 
I don't, I think y'all have done now with me renewed on that new universal lease, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, so unfortunately it's, you know, month to month is more structured for someone who, you know, is looking to purchase a home, move out of the area. They need a little bit more time, but then what we see is people go month to month and then they're staying, stay, you know, you, you would have had time to renew your lease for that, you know, a, for a year or whatever that amount of time is. Um, but unfortunately, that is also another change that was set in place that the month to month fee is going to be comparable to the average of what the bond rents or the bond amounts are. And some of those are very, you know, kind of on the higher end. So that's where that money amount comes or that dollar figure comes from on month to month because it's always going to be a higher rate on month to month than what the market rate in, you know, would be for your home. And I think that's pretty comparable if you were doing a month-to-month -month lease as well on the outside. Right. Typically, they would charge more just because the risk to the landlord uh, is the same thing, yeah. with, with having a, to, to, re to basically prepare the house for a new tenant goes up. But so I would just encourage if... It if, is a pretty steep difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a very yeah. steep difference. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, it is a steep yeah. difference, but it is that, that is the price for it if that is the option that you choose because you have, of course, you have the option. Right. You can renew month to month for a certain amount of time, or you know, if you don't want to renew, you not sure if you want to move out or not, there's that month to month fee, and then you always could renew if you right. see that you know you've gone month to month or two months, I've paid this higher rate, and we haven't found what we want. You absolutely have the option to renew at that time, too. It, it is significant, but perhaps unfortunately is, is what the rate is. <clears throat> Any other questions? I, I know you got stuff on your mind. Hold on, Robin. I got one hand up here. <laughs> to adjust it, blah, blah, blah. But I don't, I know you guys try to get universal stuff, but I don't think that's fair. I mean, you know, your hearing could go out. It's like when I was in active duty and we had the generators going all the time. It's, it's, it's terrible. So, is this, so was this part of the replacement? Is this a no, warranty issue that no, we No, it's not the replacement. I have the, uh, the old one, I, I guess it's not considered old or whatever, but it wasn't under the one that you were, they're doing Right, the, the replacement that's happening at the Yeah, Memorial. but it's, I still have the two, the one upstairs went out, and they replaced the motor, like I said, and the guy said he couldn't get it adjusted because you, they buy for everybody, and um, it, it's too loud for, for mine, I'm sure the big ones that they got just one now, that it, it probably works perfect, but it doesn't really suit my, my place, I guess. It's, it's just loud. What's your address, ma'am? 3259 B Sylvester Drive. And like I said, it came out, it wasn't working, they replaced it, and I'm like, this thing is terribly loud, and then, uh, called them and said, hey, can it be adjusted or something? I mean, it's not, it might be a faulty motor. Um, it's running really loud, but they came it's, out. It's cooling, though. Oh, it, it's cooling, yeah. <laughs> it's cooling, it's just, it, it's you can't sleep while it's cooling. <laughs> it's very loud. In the neighborhood, okay. probably loud. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not that loud, but you can hear it downstairs. <laughs> or whatever, when you're up there sleeping or whatever. You can't, you can't sit out in the yard or have with that. You know, it wouldn't be a loud conversation. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> it's, it's bad. The, the upstairs is, it, it's just loud. Okay. We'll so take a look we'll at take it. Yes, sir. Several years ago, there was a section of sidewalk um, hallway by Shorelark, and the longest it was like, I don't know and for the longest time it was taped off when it was six months or a year they finally got it fixed. Now there's one on Seagull 
that they've got four posts around this section of sidewalks over by the pool. That it's been a long time. Several years. <laughs> it's been mm -hmm. a couple of years that it's been taped <laughs> off. I, don't, I mean, I get sometimes you've got to get the funding, you got to make the time, you got to schedule stuff. But why? <laughs> it, it's, I'm just curious. Yeah, no, so I don't know the specific. Go ahead. So, yes, so the funding is in place. Uh, we actually started our flat work repairs uh, in June, uh, but now uh, concrete repairs are on hold because they can't pour concrete and get it to set in this heat, With the heat. Uh, without it cracking before it, it drying out too quick and cracking. So as soon as the temperature calms down, that is one of the next places we'll be moving to. I was just going to say, I do believe both of the areas that he just mentioned were both absolutely on that scope of work for the flat work repair that is about to, well, will start as soon as they can. Okay. Um, yes, when you said them, I know, well, I mean, we've got several out there, okay. um, several areas, but those two specific ones, I'm, I know exactly what you're talking about. <clears throat> just a little remark to Balfour. Um, the spray foam installation that you put up in the attic, thank you because it's nice when you go up and go to bed and it's 10 degrees cooler, <laughs> especially in this heat. So kudos to the spray foam installation. Thank there. you for the feedback. Yeah, these guys had, had briefed me that that was happening. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely cooler. Like I said, almost 10 degrees cooler when you go up to bed at night, so it's great. Thank you. Thank you. We definitely want to kind of share that up for sure. <coughs> I'm glad that it is making a difference. It is. Absolutely. Well, and especially if, I mean, if it's something that for other communities that are right. under the yes, community or you know, we'll make sure to pass that the kudos on because it couldn't make an impact to other okay. other communities around the navy yes ma'am mini mart open later mini mart later so i don't think we have anybody from the ENIACs here um i have heard that uh, a couple of times so i do have my in brief with the mini mart or the ENIACs manager Coming up, I, 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 I do intend on bringing that up. Um, I, I think the, the challenge that they're having right now is man, just just hiring people to keep it open. Um, so actually, a lot of our a lot of our venues, um, I would tell you that I think we are hiring across the board. So if you know people that are looking for jobs, I know uh, MWR has got openings. I I know the NEX has openings. The wages are fairly good on base um, because of just some congressional mandates with minimum wage, et cetera, uh, but we still struggle. Um, so, but I, I do intend on bringing that up with the, um, the NEX manager to see if what we could do, because I have heard that from several people. Thanks. Yes, sir. I was going to address that because I asked them once when I was there why, because it, 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 they shortened their hours when COVID hit three, four years ago, and now they're yeah. having trouble getting more enough employees to cover the set of all the So I, 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 think, I think there's still some rem some remnants of COVID, our shrinking. Mm -hmm. um, there's been some discussions of expanding hours at other, uh, at other venues as well to kind of get us back to expanded hours, not expanded hours, but closer to what we used to be before COVID. Uh, but uh, again, uh, I, th I think the challenge that when I talk to these folks um, is hiring people. So again, if you know folks that are looking for jobs, we are actively hiring. So, and that would help keep the doors open, I think, to some of these things a little longer. What else? Ma'am, is there, is there any intention to bring back the pool up on Holloway? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, I'm assuming that's the housing pool. Yes. 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 So I go back to what we do, were just talking about. Hiring lifeguards mm -hmm. has been a challenge. Mm -hmm. I understand that Liberty Military Housing doesn't require a lifeguard, and families are free to swim at their own risk and leisure. Hmm. Is there a reason that Balfour Baby can't do the same thing? So I think at the end of the day, it comes down to my comfort level. That's a pretty deep pool. Okay. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know that I would feel very comfortable not having a lifeguard there with the depth that, that we have. I, I don't recall, but it was, I feel like it was, the number was 
like maybe close to double digits? It's 11 feet. And yeah, there's, okay. There's, I know there is a pool and one of the units of Florida that is open and it's four and a half foot across <laughs> the board. And that's why they're doing it. I, I think that yeah. would change the conversation um, if, if, if we were talking about a shallower pool. But even then, I, I will tell you, <laughs> it, it's, it's a risk. So we don't have to have a conversation. And to, to effectively operate it, I have to have five certified lifeguards. And the past two years, we have not been able to accommodate that metric. It was open very briefly and very limited hours last year with three. Um, and we started recruiting for this in January, February time frame this year. And we're not able to get the pool open. We could not get one single lifeguard for the pool. Are you recruiting from schools? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, most of our, you know, our lifeguard pool comes from typically high school and then a few college students. Um, uh, and we, we have kind of thought across the board, we're thinking outside the box for some other management tools and what we can do, you know, we reach out to, of course, the water park from other places. Um, their certification or what they require there is not what's required here. So. Um, we're looking at offering this year coming up. I mean, of course, you know, it does not help us now, but um, for the next pool season that we would open for putting, you know, holding the class here at our pool with the Red Cross, whoever can do that certification. We've got a couple people kind of tentatively lined up to put people through the training and they're hired contingent upon completing that training. Um, so definitely, because it, it was very frustrating you know, to, to, to ready the pool, do all this work. It's sitting there, it looks good. We want it to be used, it needs to be used. A lot about hot in the face. Right, right, <laughs> absolutely, same. It yeah. has just been a huge, it, yes, it's been very tough the past two years. Um, and we, that is, that's hurt. We're very, we were all just deeply saddened that we couldn't get it open because everybody worked so hard to get it ready. Um, but, but same thing, and, and the question, your question is a great question about, you know, who requires what states are a little bit different, the size of the pool. Um, we do have one over one of our forest sites where they can operate with pool attendance, um, which I think is what they did this past season. Um, unfortunately, it is a comfort level as well. Um, a huge risk to be swimming at your own risk in that pool for sure. So it's not something that we were on board with either. <clears throat> what about the full movie night? I'm sorry, what? Uh, you used to do a movie night where you, know, you had a lot Wait, of people in mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, we would, it, absolutely. Is that, yeah. Is that it's something that still, we can still do? No, I still have to have lifeguards on duty to do that. Mm -hmm. Any function in there within that area, even if we were just using the space and not the pool, I still have to have lifeguards on duty. Yeah. That's why we haven't done anything. You know, it's it's a, a place and a venue, especially in the summer with you know snowballs or any vendors we could bring out. It's a space we would absolutely want to utilize. But if I do, I have to have lifeguards there. You mentioned that you had reached out to water parks to see what they were requiring for their lifeguards, and you said unfortunately it wasn't what was needed here. What does that mean? Right. So like they they go through a training at the water park. This is what I was told by their you know their management team. Um, they do employ quite a few people at the big park, and they have them kind of stationed off. Where I'm sure they absolutely do have several certified lifeguards on duty. Most of them are just basically, a, for lack of a better word, like a pool attendant um, that don't have those certifications. So that's why we've reached out because they get such a huge influx and a lot of applications. And it's like, okay, we're looking at any overflow applications that don't get hired on at you know different pools or you know, wherever it may be, the Natatorium in Biloxi, you know, any of the yacht clubs that have pools, anything, and we just... Nothing? Nothing. Mm -hmm. We got three applicants, three applicants for lifeguards, and only one of them was certified, and unfortunately, we can't do with just one. Mm -hmm. I would have had to have it. So, it was very disheartening, um, everything that we did to try to secure what we needed to be able to get the pool open. So, and we thought by starting earlier, we would. The problem with the high school, not to, I don't want to just beat up on it, but like for the high school kids, it doesn't just have to be Gulfport, but their district also now goes year round. So they get intercession breaks. So that really, really hurt me there because they were going to be in school so much of the time. There's only like a few weeks 
in the summertime that they're not in yeah, school during the hours that we would want to operate it. So, and I know a lot of the other districts are going to start kind of maybe following suit on that in the near future. So, then we're looking at the college kids. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely been a battle. One I never thought we would have to face in all the years that we've been here and had that pool open. It's been sure. a battle across the whole country, though, because mm -hmm. we staff the pool at the fitness center. And so it's a, across the country. I mean, you would see it on the morning national news about how beaches were closing across the country because they couldn't have enough lifeguards on the stand. The water park uses a company called Ellis, and most of their life, lifeguards are really swim recreation aids. They're not certified lifeguards. Um, we certify our own lifeguards at the pool. We have an LGI lifeguard instructor, but our pool is only six and a half feet deep, so we shall water certify our lifeguards, so they still wouldn't be able to help out at the housing pool. So it's been, it's, it's hard, it really is hard. And we go out to the schools, um, the school liaison helps us with going to the schools to recruit kids to come in. We pay for their certification for them to get certified to work for us for the summer. It's, it's a struggle across the whole industry. So, I mean, we watched all summer for you guys to get your pool open and you know, we feel your pain. <laughs> we feel it. Is it possible for housing, just to put out another um, notice, and I know you've done it in the past, just about keeping pets on leashes and watching them. I know a lot of people went in and out, you know, with their pets. They've been getting out. I was attacked a couple weeks ago. I had to beat one off with a lawnmower. Um, so uh, that was not fun. That was scary. They didn't think their dogs would get out. Had another one walking on. They didn't have the dog on a leash. They just kind of let them run behind the houses so they can get exercise. It only takes one minute. That's it. You know, and they're attacking. Yeah, no, we'll absolutely get that. So just just a friendly reminder. Keep them on a leash or something. I had so, one charge of me late last week. Yeah. yeah, I had one in the front yard. I was working in the garden, and so it's a scary thing when they you have two of them coming at you. So. And what I would encourage as well is if, if, if you see, like, we just call security. We so did. We went and got security, and he was banging on their door, and he was on their porch, and the dogs charged him. He had to pull out his stick and was backing them off until the tenant finally opened the door and let them in. So he, they even went after him. <clears throat> so, and then she's got bitten before going to the mailbox. <laughs> because it was a young child walking a dog and the child couldn't control the dog so he took a bite out of her leg so so just a reminder if they could put that out yeah absolutely and the number of dogs people have so i don't I, know what the limit is but there's i know that you have to report right and the application process you you list out how many pets you have and yes so if, if there are some concerns is there a limit? There are two pet two. Yeah. So you can have two registered pets right. just as pets. You can have a third one if it's a service animal or an emotional support animal. They can be registered and then you can have three. We all need to do a survey then. <laughs> well, yeah, well the, right. the problem we honestly have, sir, is we have residents that get dogs after they move in and don't register them. Mm -hmm. right. um, or bring them in knowing that they're going to have pets in the house and we don't have the authority to go house to house every week and ask how many pets you have uh you word of mouth walk through the walk through the common area and count them in, in the we, we do sir we, and we catch several owners with multiple pets that aren't supposed to be there that aren't even registered so we do catch them we do ask that residents if you get charged like the ceo said call security um report it to housing this is the first time we've heard of the the, the few people in here get charged by dogs. Mm -hmm. we, we as housing manage that, and if we hear that you are being charged by animals, we can go to that resident, the owner of that dog, and let them know that they're on notice, um, that they can be evicted, that they have to get rid of their dogs. But if we don't know, we can't do anything about it. I know security uh, came because I had, next thing you know, I had four security up there at the house. The police was at the house, and I called and talked to Amy, yelling and hollering, please get somebody here because these dogs are running loose and there's little kids who could play in their pool in the front yard. So whether or not, he said he took a report and I don't know, it was a new tenant, they said they didn't have a base ID, they didn't have a driver's license. Okay. 
I don't know, but so, they did say they were taking a report whether or not they turned it into housing. I have no idea, but I did call housing, spoke with Amy, I believe okay. it was. So, so I, I would yeah. definitely encourage contact security. Um, you know, security, they do a, a daily right. report, right, of all of the things that they're responding to. And, and XO and I, the command master, we review it every day. And, it, and if we start to see the same thing over and over, it's like, hey, what's going on? Right. But I would also encourage, if, if something that doesn't look quite right, right, so two pets, a third possibly if it's a service animal. Right. If, it, if it doesn't look quite right, just contact the house. And I understand and because if they're moving, the dogs are not familiar with the yard, the house, but I think they just need to be aware of when their dog's in the yard, get them used to the yard, whether or not they can jump the fence, right. go right. under the fence, or they're walking them to the car without the leash on, and then that quick, the dog's chasing a car down the street, you know, just walking to their car, you know. So just, just a little reminder for people just to be aware if they could. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get the reminder out as well just for, um, to make sure that folks are minding. And, and, and children as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we've recently had to remind folks about what the do's and don'ts of, 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 uh, of, of leaving children mm -hmm. at home is. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. What else? The mail issue aside, I just we've only been here a few months, but I just want to say how happy we are with the the housing and the environment that's created here on base. I mean, it's so quiet. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you don't put as many people as they are around. It's, if it's the heat keeping everybody warm. <laughs> that's what it is. Like okay. It's not. It's but like we're very pleased. <laughs> I think once we start to, I mean, just walking even over today, I can sense that the temperatures are maybe this week are a little bit nicer, but I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to getting back outdoors and, and doing some things. <laughs> All right, how, how are we doing on time here? We've been going about 45 minutes. Uh, so I, I just want to put out a couple of other um, uh, notices here on upcoming events that are happening in the community and just things to be aware of. Uh, so um, we have a mobile app. Um, so Navy region southeast, so all of the bases in the southeast Navy region, you can download this app. I can't tell you how many times I've used it so far just to look up hours of, oh, when's the pool at the gym open or the movies, because it's got all the links to the right places. Um, and, and, but I would say that probably the more uh, important thing there is it'll, if you, if you um, enable notifications on your phone, it'll notify you if we have to do a, a, a gate closure, for example, because we either have a drill or we have a, a real world event happening. If there's any changes in hours of operation, say if anyone has to close early because of staffing issues, um, and, and it, again, it'll notify you on your phone. So I would encourage folks, I think, uh, we probably don't have as many people on that app as, uh, as we probably could in terms of just knowing the number of tenants or, uh, that we have in housing. So again, Navy Region Southeast uh, on your either your Android device or your Apple device. And then again, you can pick as many installations as, as you want. Uh, obviously, we, we're here at NCBC Gulfport, so I would encourage you to just click the, the, uh, the, the, the local installation as your preference. Uh, but if you're visiting other installations in the area, that's, that's another great resource. Um, let's see. Uh, we do have um, a couple of upcoming events that I wanted to mention. So the next special meal at the galley will be on September 21st. Uh, we hit record numbers uh, last week with the steak and lobster. Since the galley opened, I think we, th that's the most we've ever fed at, at, the, at, the, at the dining facility. It was over 600 meals? 615 meals. Um, so that's, that's pretty uh, uh, remarkable there. But the, the next one will be on September 21st. It is tied to uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, so keep an eye out for the menu. We do have... Um, Another uh, event coming up on the, the next day after that, the September 22nd, it's the Bells Across America uh, in honor of our Gold Star families. Uh, that'll be at the, at, the, at the training hall or the theater. Um, 
at 10 a.m. Um, and then the week of moving into October, the week of the 8th through the 14th of October, we'll be doing fire prevention week activities uh, throughout the Bay, so keep an eye out for that. And then um, the Youth Center will be having an open house on October the 26th at 4 p.m. Um, Fright Night, uh, which is probably one of the most popular events that I know I remember from my previous time here at uh, on the base, is will be taking place on October the 27th at 6 p.m. And uh, Debbie tells me that they have bought like the entire Brian. Eastern Mississippi <laughs> or Southern Mississippi supply. Seventy-five thousand pieces of candy is what they're planning for this year. So I told her I think I just got a cavity once you said 75,000 pieces of candy. So that'll be a fun event. Um, the Child Development Center will be doing a character parade on the 31st at 9.30 in the morning, so I'm looking forward to that as well. And then trick-or-treating in housing uh, will be on, on actual Halloween, which is the 31st from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, so uh, just keep that in mind as well. Okay, if there are no additional questions, we'll go ahead and close this out. I'll stick around for another 15 minutes or so. If anybody has any other questions, feel free to come up. I have one more question, ma'am. Yes. Um, the playground on Holloway that's just a couple blocks down from the pool, is there a status update in regards to when that's going to be open? September 1st. Yes. The playground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. September 1st? Yes, okay, sir. thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, everybody have a great week. Again, please, I can't emphasize enough hurricane preparedness. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all out in the neighborhoods. Thank you very much.